To make the sewn in head for our doll, we need to stitch the back of head file first. Stitch the die line for the rectangle on a piece of stabilizer and cut a piece of doll fabric uh, twice the length of the rectangle and with a stretch going in this direction. Be sure to cut it a little bit longer actually than the rectangle so that you have some overhang and the width of this rectangle will be the width of the rectangle on the stabilizer and then just tape it in place so that you have uh, the folded edge is flush with the uh, left side of the line and the open ends overlap the right side by about half an inch and then stitch the tack down. Remove the tape and then gently peel this fabric panel up from the stabilizer. Just grab the seam and then just gently peel it away from the stabilizer. Now we can just tape over the tear in the stabilizer so that we can keep using it. Trim close to this tack down line. Turn the tube of fabric right side out and you'll see that, this, that we have a seam on the outside and I just kind of form it so that it's in the center of the tube as shown. Back at the machine we'll stitch the die line for the head and also for the uh, center lines that run vertically and horizontally. Cover the bottom horizontal line with a piece of doll fabric, stretch perpendicular um, to the center line and let it overhang half an inch. Now we'll stitch a tack down line to secure this. You'll see here that I've marked a center line at the base of the head. However, I added this to the file so you'll actually have a stitch line at the base of the head. We're just going to lay that uh, tube of fabric seam side up centered with that center line on the stabilizer. We're going to let it overhang that tack down line in black there. We're going to let that overhang about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch. Then we will take um, and we'll take that in place and then we'll take another piece of fabric that's smaller um, but long with the stretch perpendicular to the center line of the head and lay it over the tube of fabric and our other piece of fabric and we're going to tape that in place. Both the tube of fabric and this extra fabric panel should overhang the horizontal line half an inch. Now we'll just stitch a tack down line to secure all of these layers together. Now we'll just remove this panel from the hoop and then we'll just trim this top seam here close to the tack down line about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch all the way across just trim it. You'll see that when we open up this fabric panel we'll see that the neck of our doll will be sandwiched in between these two layers of fabric like this. Once you finish with this fabric panel, you need to go ahead and stitch the ears for your doll next. And then what we'll do is we will load up a head file with the face of our choosing and stitch the doll line for the head on a piece of stabilizer. Here I'm just using a scrap piece of stabilizer to cut as a template for my fabric and then over the head you're going to place one piece of fleece and one piece of doll jersey with the stretch perpendicular to the grain line. 
After you tape your fabric over the die line, you are not going to stitch color number two. So skip the little circle that stitches at the base of the head and go ahead and stitch the tack down line, which is the third color for your head. So this is going to tack down those layers and it's also going to tack a um, center line at the base of the head. Again, do not stitch the satin stitch circle, which is color number two, if you are making the sewn in head. And then after you stitch the tack down, you're going to flip the hoop over to the reverse side and tape a scrap piece of stabilizer over the face area so that we can stitch the eyes and the mouth. Now we'll stitch the details for the face. Stitch the die line for your ears. You should have already stitched your ears and if you're not sure how to stitch the ears you can watch our ears and head video um, to see how that's done but your ears should be stitched already and then you would turn them right side out and you would place your ears over the ears die line and tape them in place so that the excess flap of fabric overhangs the die line on the outside of the doll's face. Make sure your ears are evenly aligned and that they're at the same height. Now we'll just stitch the tack down for both ears. Now that we have stitched the ears, this face doesn't have ears, but yours should. You're going to take that back panel and you're going to lay it over the face. Make sure the neck is laying on the face. And you're just going to align that center line there with the center line on your face. About an inch up, half, half an inch to an inch away from the bottom of the face, like I'm doing here. And then we'll just tape this in place over our face. Once you've taped that in place, you can tape also a piece of fleece over everything. That way your doll will be fully lined. And then we'll just stitch the tack down, the final tack down for our head. Notice that there's a gap left in the stitching at the top of the head. Um, that allows us to turn the head right side out. So just grab the head, pull it out of the stabilizer, and then just remove the stabilizer from the back side of the face. Trim around the head close to the tack down line and when you reach the area where the gap is, make sure you cut a half inch tab of excess fabric so that you have something to grab onto to do your ladder stitch to close it. If you want to magnify the mouth of your baby, you can tape a magnet with Dr. Scholl's medical adhesive bandage tape right at the center of the lips and this will hold it in place after the doll is stuffed and finished and prevent it from shifting around. Now we'll just turn the head right side out. You'll see on the back side of the head, instead of a circle, like the doll joint head, you'll have a flap of fabric like this. To attach the head to the body in the hoop, you're going to make sure you want to use this uh, torso file, the one shown here, and then you will uh, stitch the dial line for the torso on a piece of stabilizer.
cover the dye line with a piece of fleece and a piece of doll jersey with a stretch perpendicular to the grain line and stitch the tack down and the belly button for your torso. Now we will stitch the dye line for the arms, the neck, and the legs. Here's that dye line for the neck and we're just going to take our face and place it face down on our tummy and we're going to take that neck fabric and we're going to make sure the chin is out of the way so it doesn't get stitched into the chest. Just flip it over and then lay that fabric tab over the neck dye line as close as you can get it. Here I'm about a half inch away but I really should have went closer here. So just get it as close as you can and then tape it in place. Now we'll just stitch the tack down for the neck first. You'll see here that it's stitching it a, a half inch away from the head. Again, I should have placed my neck closer to, um, I, should have, I should have moved the head in closer to that dye line. But it's going to stitch twice to secure and then you will stitch your arms each arm on and if you're unsure how to do that make sure you go and watch the sewn in torso video so you can see how to how to lay your arms and your legs so that they get sewn on correctly um, and here's just some footage from another video here I'm just showing you how to um, further secure your head um, if you are doing the sewn in head so that it's not so floppy so you're just basically going to do a ladder stitch all the way across and here I'm just making a knot and then I'm coming directly across from the knot and taking a stitch and then I'll just do a ladder stitch all the way across. Once I get all the way to this other side, I turn around and go back the other way doing a ladder stitch. And here I'm taking larger stitches, but you really should take smaller ones so that it looks neater. Um, and then you'll just pull it um, taunt, the stitches taunt, and don't pull them too tight or you could deform the shape of your chin. But you just want to kind of get the slack out. And um, then when you get all the way back to your knot where you began, you're just going to knot it off and hide the ends inside the face. 